Hi everyone, my name is Katie and welcome back to my channel. With the craziness of all of the readathons in July now over and you would think that I would need a break after all that, but no, I'm just diving into more readathons. In July, I did the Book Junkie Trials, the Reading Rush, and my Owls. And I'm just, I'm just doing more in August because that is what a sane human does. And I kind of just finagled all of my books that I wanted to read in July to fit the readathons that are that were happening in July. I'm kind of doing the same for August. So the one readathon that I'm doing is the newts, and that's why I sat my owls in July. I'm just being a magic zoologist because it's one of the easier careers, and I was able to fit all of the books that I had been wanting to read to the owls challenges for that, so that now I can do my newts in August. And again, all of the challenges pretty much lined up with books that I wanted to read. So it works out perfectly. The next thing is that me and Madison Mary over at Princess of Paperback have decided that this is going to be ARC August. And it's not anything official, but it's just something that we are doing and you can join in. And please let us know if you are going to join in down below. But we both have a bunch of ARCs that we've accumulated both physically and on NetGalley. And it's time to read all of them before all the books come out. So we are ca officially calling it ARC August. And so you will see on this list that there are going to be lots of ARCs that I'm going to be trying and getting through so that I can have reviews out and read them before they come out and it's super fun that I like now have arcs. A lot of these I just got at BookCon or trading things that I have that I got at BookCon or through NetGalley. I have a lot of e-arcs. However, it's not like exclusively arcs. I still am probably going to read a mix of released books and arcs. So for the newts, the challenges that I need to become a Magizoologist is an O of in care of magical creatures, which is all three challenges. It goes levels A, E, O, so the vowels. And then I need an E in charms and an E in herbology. So that's seven books total, and that's pretty manageable. And there are going to be a lot of novels on here, but I'm going to try and mix it up with some graphic novels and all that stuff, and of course, lots of arcs. So let's start off with Care of Magical Creatures. The first book that I'm going to be reading for my A level is To Match the Challenge, a book that starts with an A. And for that, I have A Heart So Fierce and Broken by Bridget Kimner. And the fact that I have this arc is like my life's dream come true. Oh man, I love this so freaking much. Like the fact that I have an arc. Because I loved A Curse of the Dark and Lonely and now I have A Hearts of Fierce Broken and I definitely want to get my hands on the sequel and read it. Like I've been dying to read it ever since I got it at BookCom and I've just been busy with other things and like I haven't had time to fit it in to my reading schedule yet but like I have it and the only reason that I have it is because of Madison because she got me a copy because she's the best. So thank you Madison for making this possible. The fact that I have this book. Just, uh. This is the sequel to A Curse of Dark and Lonely. And as you can see, I tabbed this up. I read it in April. I absolutely loved it. I got this autographed copy at my local uh, indie bookstore and I have this awesome bookmark that I'm definitely gonna use while I read it and this fairy loot print because I did get the book in the fairy loot box. However, I gave it to Angela because of course the Dark and Lonely is her favorite book and I wanted her to have it for her collection. And it's a Beauty and the Beast retelling and normally I'm not like a biggest fan of Beauty and the Beast retelling except for this one and for A Court of Thorns and Roses which is not like really a Beauty and the Beast retelling. I mean like it kind of is, kind of is, whatever. But yes, I love this one. I was surprised by how much I loved it and the sequel is going to be following one of my favorite characters. So I can't wait. So it's kind of, it's, I think this series is now called the Curse Breaker series. So it revolves around a bunch of curses. So a curse so dark and lonely. What is it about? Let me tell you. Harper Lacey is a girl struggling with the pressure of her life. Her long gone father, dying mother, and constant underestimation due to her cerebral palsy. Her life, however, completely changes when she is brought into the world of Emberfall, where Prince Ren is under a curse. He will repeat the 18th autumn of his life over and over again until he gets a girl to fall in love with him. If not, he will slowly transform into a beast. Harper, being from the normal world, really doesn't know what to believe. But as she begins to spend more time with Ren and in this enchanted land, she begins to understand that more than just Ren's life is at stake, but the fate of the whole kingdom is at stake. This book is so good. It has some really good cerebral palsy rep, and it's just amazing. Like, I love Harper. She's just so strong-willed, and I could go on and on about this book. Yes, I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. And now, in the sequel, A Heart So Fierce and Broken, we are following... Ray, who is Ren's best friend and captain of the guard, 
And it's really cool when books in a series like shift perspectives to different characters. So this is Gray's book, whereas the first book was Ren's book. So we don't really have that many perspectives from Harper or Ren. I think it's mostly from Gray and this new character called Leah Mara, who is the daughter of Karis Loran, which is one of the enemies in book one. So this sounds like a little bit enemies to lovers. I'm here for it. For the E level in Care of Magical Creatures, we have a book under 300 pages. And for this one, I'm going to be reading Mooncakes by Wendy Shu and Suzanne Walker. And I got this one on NetGalley. And if you have a NetGalley account, I believe it's still a read now book, so you don't even need to request it. As long as you have a NetGalley account, you can read it. And I'm so excited because it looks so cute and everyone is raving about it. It's a love story involving witchcrafts, demons, and family and it is between a female and a non-binary character so we love that rep it's amazing and it also involves two chinese american teenagers nova is a witch that worked at her grandmother's bookstore and helps them loan out spell books tam was her childhood best friend and crosses paths with nova again when they are fighting a horse demon in the woods okay so we're gonna try something new because my neighbors are being really freaking noisy and this is the only time that i have to film all weekend and who knows when it gets later they may just get louder so i'm put on an asmr room in the background it's like nighttime cricket vibes and i think it's really it's a really nice background noise so i think we're just gonna go with that in the background and hopefully that drowns out my loud neighbors because I'm sick and tired of hearing them and when this video is done filming I'm going to blast BTS on my TV. So with that being said let me move on to what book is going to be my O level for Care of Magical Creatures and that is a book with a bird on the cover and of course I'm going to be reading The Storm Crow by Kaylin Josephson and this book just has such a nice feel to it. However, if you are doing this challenge for the newts, I highly suggest that you also pick up The Merciful Crow by Margaret Owen, which has a bunch of crows on it. It's one of my new favorite books. I read it the first week of the Book Junkie Trials and I will link you my vlog up in the cards so that you can see my thoughts on it. But like, I love it so much. It comes out July 31st. Please support it. Please buy it. So publishers nowadays are really getting me with the cool designs and if this cover wasn't beautiful enough when you take it off the first printing has this awesome lightning pattern on it and once I saw that I was like well now I need to buy it. So um, and then you open it up and the end pages are the maps which is just such like a nice touch. Oh I love that. I also heard that this book has a love triangle and honestly I'm a sucker for a good love triangle. I feel like it has like its moments in YA where people are like we love love triangles and they're like we hate them and now people are like okay we can we can do love triangles again so i'm excited rodare is a magical tropical kingdom where elemental crows are a part of everyday life then the Eleusian empire invades and completely destroys their way of life princess thaya is thrown into a terrible depression leaving her sister kaliza to run the kingdom however when kaliza is forced into an engagement with the crown prince of Eleusia, thaya is spurred into action Together, her and Kaliza embark on a journey and find a hidden crow's egg and make secret plans to hatch it and bring back what was stolen from their people. What is really cool about this is that in the description it talks about how the main character is thrown into a terrible depression. So I'm hoping that it actually deals with some topics of mental health in a fantasy setting, which is really cool. I love when real world topics that are really important are cast in a different light in a fantasy setting and I think it's a really good avenue to talk about these issues from a different perspective because it's not in our world. So let's hope that it touches on that topic because I think that'll be really cool. And also just elemental crows. I'm on a crow kick lately. I don't know why, but crows are pretty cool. Next, we move on to charms and the A level is a book with a gorgeous cover. So this one going to be an arc, There Will Come in Darkness, and this will be an arc that Madison and I will be buddy reading. And I got this one at BookCon. I will link my BookCon haul up above because ugh, it was just such a fun time and like you can hear more about the stories of how I got all of these arcs and stuff. I just I get so happy thinking about BookCon. Um, I will be at BookCon 2020. I already know that so uh if you're going, let me know. <laughs> it's a little bit far in advance to be planning for it, but I'm planning for it. So the tagline is, The Age of Darkness Approaches. Five lives stand in its way. Who will stop it or unleash it? The seven prophets used to guide society, but 100 years ago, they completely disappeared. The only thing left was a secret prophecy about an age of darkness that will bring forth a new prophet to either save the world or completely destroy it. And thus, five souls are set on a collision course. An exiled prince, a ruthless killer, a once faithful leader, 
a reckless gambler, and a dying girl. One of them or all of them have the power to save the world or destroy it. And will they be savior or destroyer? Oof, oof, I love prophecies and the fact that we have like this cast of characters that could all either be the prophet or only one of them. It's gonna be like, who is it? Who's the prophet? I don't know. And obviously I picked this for its gorgeous cover and I just have the arc and I wanna read it before it comes out because it does come out in September 2019. And the E-level in charms is to read a comic or a graphic novel or a manga and for this one I'm going to be reading Bloom by Kevin Panetta and Savannah Ganachow and this one just has this beautiful blue color palette and it seems like a treat to read. I also got this one at BookCon. It's about Ari who is dying to get out of his small hometown into the big city to pursue music. However, he's stuck working in his family's bakery, a life that he does not want to pursue. Before he can leave, he must find and train his replacement and thus he meets Hector who loves baking. And as they become closer, love begins to bloom. It just seems like it's going to be super cute and heartwarming, and I'm excited to read it and read more graphic novels because I've been slowly but surely getting into them. Okay, so for herbology, the A level is to read an audiobook, and for this one, I'm going to be reading Sorcery of Thorns by Mark Rogerson, which they have on script. And you may be saying, Katie, you just read this book in July. What do you mean you're reading it again in August? I am reading it again in August and this time I'm going to be reading it via audiobook because I just want to re-experience the story and also this is our August pick for our July overhyped book club. I will leave some information about that down below and yes this is the next overhyped book that we will be reading. You already know that I love this book. It's my everything which is why I'm rereading it again and I'm just so excited that I can like consume it in this new format like oh. I just love this book so much. I think it'll be so fun to listen to on audio. First ever audiobook I listened to was Illuminate, which was rereading a favorite for me, but it was kind of confusing because of the format of the book and I wasn't following along physically when I think I probably should have, but I'm interested to see how I will like listening to an audiobook of a book that I already know pretty well and that I have loved. So that's what's gonna go down in August. Elizabeth is a foundling in the great library of Ostmere and has been raised her whole life to believe that sorcerers are evil. She longs to become a warden, a keeper of dangerous sentient spellbooks known as grimoires. However, one day the most dangerous grimoire is released from the library and Elizabeth is framed for the crime. She must flee and turn to her sworn enemy for help, Nathaniel Thorne, a sorcerer. However, as her and Nathaniel embark on their journey, she begins to question everything that she has been raised to believe as she unravels a centuries old conspiracy theory book was everything to me like just magical books like a love for libraries and just love and the characters oh my gosh oh my gosh i'm love it so much please read it if you have not and then that way you can join us on our live show and when we have the dates and stuff i will make sure to talk about that on my twitter and my channel and stuff so stay tuned and the last challenge for the newts that I will be fulfilling is the E-level, which is a book between 350 and 390 pages. And this one was kind of hard to find a book that fit that because all of my books are like long. However, I chose Reverie by Ryan Lasala, which I just got on NetGalley and I'm really excited for. It comes out in January. It is described as Inception meets the Magicians. Sounds cool. And it has, it has wigs and a maniacal drag queen. Sorcerers attempting to unravel the reality of Connecticut. So it just sounds like super ridiculous and fun and I'm here for it. It's like 384 pages I think. So perfect for this challenge. Kane Montgomery is trying to piece his life back together when an attack robs him of his memories. He uncovers a, a war for the rights to reality itself called a reverie. Reveries are worlds born of a person's fantasies come to life. They can be unhinged and dangerous which is why Kane and the others job was to unravel them. That is, until the others rid Kane of his memories. And now he must solve the mystery of Posey, who wants to harvest the reveries for their pure imaginative power. I mean, I follow Ryan Lasala on Twitter. He just seems like super fun and amazing. And like this book seems like it's gonna be great. So, and this is one that I have on my Kindle and the Kindle is nice because I can bring it on the train and read with me on my way to work and stuff when I'm not listening to an audiobook. So hopefully, and also I can read it at night in bed, like with the lights off, which is kind of nice because you can't do that with a physical book. So. I've been really enjoying having a Kindle so far and it's opened up a lot more opportunities as far as reading arcs and stuff go. So those are all the challenges for the newts. However, 
there are some other arcs that I'm considering. So I'm getting a copy of Servant and Doug delivered to me via Madison got me a copy at Epic Reads Day and gave it to Melissa, who is from my hometown and has been my best friend for like ever. You've probably seen her on my channel because I've done some videos with her. So Melissa was at Epic Reads Day with Madison and my friends were hanging out without me. It's fine. I'm not jealous. But because Madison already had an arc of Serpent and Dove, she gave her extra to Melissa, which then dropped it off at my boyfriend's house, and my boyfriend is visiting his family, so he's going to bring it back with him when he is back, so eventually I will be getting it, and if my boyfriend forgets it at his parents' house, he will be in deep trouble. So if you're watching this, Alex, don't forget it. <laughs> with that being said, so it will eventually make its way to me at some point in August and mm, I want to read it. It doesn't fit in with any of the challenges of the nudes, but uh, I really want to read it so I'm probably going to try and get to it, especially because it comes out in September. I want to read it before release so that I can have a review for it. Lou is a witch that has fled from her coven and took shelter in the city of Cesarean, forsaking all magic. Witches are feared and hunted and burned at the stake. And Reed Diggory has led his whole life as a witch hunter. However, some sort of wicked stunt forces them into a union. Holy matrimony. Now Lou, the witch, is married to Reed, the witch hunter, and it's like in French inspired witches and witch hunting. Like, oh, it just sounds perfect. And I can't wait to have my arc and I already have my Barnes and Noble exclusive edition ordered. I'm very excited for it in case you can't tell. I need it. And I'm very excited for my physical copy to get here because I love it. So that covers like most of what I really, really hope to be getting to in Arc August. However, I have a few other books that I can possibly read throughout the month and most of these are e-arcs. So I'm just going to give like a little bit of a description about them, not like a full blown summary, but just like a tagline or two to give a gist of what it's about because I'm not actually sure if I'm going to get to them or not. So, well, this book I know I am going to read and it's not an arc, but it's A Feast of Sparks by Sierra Simone, which is the sequel to Lesson in Thorns, which I read in June and adored. You can see my June wrap up for more of my thoughts on that, but I loved it. And it's basically like a super, 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 super smutty book about six childhood friends that are then reunited at the place where they played as children called Thor Chapel Manor. And it's like, they're just all attracted to each other and stuff goes down and there's this whole mystery of and like this pagan ritual that takes place in this atmospheric English manner and like it's just if you like smut, if you like intense smut, if you like mysteries, I like to think of it as like a grown-up Raven Boys. So make of that what you will but I'm very excited for the sequel coming out August 1st. <laughs> the next one I have on my list is Well Met by Jen DeLuca and this one is a romantic comedy set to the backdrop of a renaissance fair. Then next up I have A River of Royal Blood by Amanda Joy and this is a North African inspired fantasy where two sisters must fight to the death for the crown. Sibling rivalry, always a good time in fantasy. I'm excited. Next is Not the Girl You Marry by Andy, Andy J. Christopher. This is about Jack and Hannah who must enter into a fake relationship, each having their own motivations. Jack, because he must write an article about how to lose a girl, and Hannah to convince her boss that she is not some emotionless robot. And then next is The Weight of a Soul by Elizabeth Tammy, about Lena, who is a Viking, strikes a deal with Hila, the goddess of death, to bring her sister Fressa back from the dead. And that is it. Those are all of my possibilities for what I We'll read in Arc August and who knows what other arcs I may be getting on that galley because I know I've requested a lot of them so it's kind of up in the air but that's what's exciting about Arc August but I do know that I want to get to all of the physical arcs. So let me know down below if you would like to join in in Arc August or if you are doing the newts let me know what you are looking forward to reading in August and if you are looking forward to any of the books that are on my DBR. And with that being said, have some fun, read some books and I'll catch you guys in the next one.